a crystal system guide. I have been asked now probably about half a dozen times to make a video on crystal systems so I can kind of explain the difference between them and how you can perhaps use a more comprehensive understanding to, in some situations, diagnose particular crystals, although it's not necessarily always super helpful. You need a composite of various different kinds of information in order to accurately determine what you have in your hand and this is an important one which is crystal systems now i'm doing this in my pajamas now there's a fairly convincing argument that i could have made more of an effort but it's my page and i'll do what i want so crystals are subdivided into about seven different categories i mean they're subdivided into loads of different categories but for the purpose of this video systems is what we're going to talk about now a crystal system of which there is seven things like cubic uh tetragonal uh, rhombohedral etc 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 this is an extension of the symmetrical shape of the crystal lattice and don't worry i will explain what a lattice is because that tends to throw people as well the lattice is essentially sort of the mathematical framework of uh, of a crystal the atoms as they sort of appear as in an in a repeatable pattern in within space now the this lattice the symmetrical um uh, geometric shape of this lattice is going to be a system. Now, if you think of the systems, although a lot of people tend to confuse it with the actual overall shape of the crystal, that's not necessarily true, although sometimes it is a determining factor, especially with things like cubic. But if you think of crystal systems as like a Lego tower and the system being sort of the bricks, it isn't always a determining factor in the overall shape of the crystal, but it does sort of teach us useful things about each particular crystal so this is a very very important and very interesting and valuable and useful metric to know and understand so i'm going to go through each crystal system one by one and then give you some examples of some crystals or some minerals that fall into this category these particular categories and then you can obviously watch this video over and over if things don't sink in straight away because this isn't necessarily the easiest subject to understand and people don't tend to touch this subject but i'm going to because i'm in my pajamas i don't think it's unreasonable to start with the cubic system because it's probably the easiest to remember which is probably an extension of the fact that the cubic system is by far the most symmetrical. This is because it's characterized by a cube-shaped lattice, unsurprisingly. So the atoms or the molecules are arranged at the corners of the cube and they're spaced out equally apart in all three spatial directions. Examples of cubic crystals include things like pyrite, which is iron sulfide, or galena, which is a pretty lead ore, or even things like diamond, contrary to popular opinion. I realise that people struggle to picture diamond in its natural habitat outside of a shop before it's been cut, but they generally tend to form into cubic systems, sometimes octahedrons, but uh, this is largely indicative of pressure, and it's mainly cubic. Now we're going to slide swiftly down the diagram to tetragonal. Now the tetragonal system is similar to the cubic system, but it has a rectangular rather than a square base. So the atoms or the molecules are spaced equally apart in two directions, but they're further apart in the third direction. Some good examples of tetragonal crystals will include things like zircon, which is a mineral that's commonly used in jewellery, but also rutile, which is a mineral used as a source of titanium. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to slide down gingerly to orthorhombic. Orthorhombic systems are essentially characterized by a rectangular prism-shaped lattice where the spacing between atoms or molecules is different in all three spatial directions. Examples of orthorhombic crystals will include things like topaz, which is a mineral used in jewelry, or sulfur, which is essentially a native element that essentially forms into crystals on occasion and is characterized by the fact that it's dreadfully smelly. Now, whilst politely ignoring the fact that the person who made this diagram, who was not me, by the way, has written monocyclic for some reason because they're not the same thing, let me introduce the unique geometric stylings of monoclinic. Now, the monoclinic system is characterized by a lattice that is similar to orthorhombic but it's tilted conspicuously in one direction. If you want to remember it, it's essentially orthorhombic, but just after three glasses of wine. 
this tilt results in a different spacing between atoms or molecules in two or three spatial directions. Good examples of monoclinic crystals will include things like gypsum or things like orthoclase feldspar. Now I'm going to wrap a ring around the triclinic system. Now, the triclinic system is probably going to be the most difficult to remember, largely by virtue of the fact that it's the least symmetrical of all of the crystal systems. It's essentially characterized by a lattice that has no right angles or equal sides. The atoms or molecules are essentially spaced differently in all three spatial directions. Some good examples of triclinic crystals will include things like turquoise, which is a bit mental in the way that it forms. And just before some keyboard warrior jumps down my neck and says that's not a crystal it's a mineral i'm fully aware of that i'm just trying not to confuse people get a job all right we're blasting our way through them now we're nearly finished this is the hexagonal system now the hexagonal system is unsurprisingly characterized by a lattice that is made up of you guess it hexagons now, the atoms or molecules are spaced equally apart in the horizontal direction, but are further apart in the vertical direction. Good examples of this will be things like quartz, which is a mineral that you'll all be familiar with, which is commonly used in jewellery, but also things like graphite, which is a non-metallic element. Now, I'm fairly sure you're going to be thrilled to the point of orgasm that we are on our last system be under no illusion, I am just as bored as you are. This is merely a video that had to be made. Now, we're on to the rhombohedral form. Now, I know that's a bit of a curveball because rhombohedral is conspicuously not on this diagram. This is an extension of the fact that the person who made this diagram, who again was not me, is an insufferable cuck. I'm only using this diagram because it's the only image I could find that I could legally use without infringing on somebody's copyright. So I'm going to have to conform myself to this person's mistakes. Now you will see conspicuously in the bottom right hand corner that I will now wrap a ring around the trigonal system. Now the trigonal is actually subdivided into the rhombohedral and the hexagonal form. So without a picture of it, I'm going to now describe the rhombohedral form. Now, the rhombohedral form, not the triclinic, is one of the two variations of the trigonal crystal system. In this form, the lattice has a rhombus-shaped base where all of the sides are equal in length, but the angles between the lattice vectors are not 90 degrees. Now, I know that is face-meltingly inarticulate, but uh, here we go. The rhombohedral lattice can be described as a distorted cube where all angles are the same, but the edges are of unequal length. Now, some good examples of minerals that crystallize in the rhombohedral form include things like calcite. Calcite is a mineral commonly used in construction materials and has a noticeable rhombohedral shape in many situations. Also, dolomite. Dolomite, on the other hand, is a mineral that is similar in appearance to calcite, but has a different chemical composition. Hello, everyone. We're done. And I'm sorry if that was a bit of a boring video. I've tried to make it as entertaining as possible. I am actually laid up with tonsillitis at the moment. The only reason I've been sat making a video in the first place is one, because I enjoy it. Two, because I found it quite distracting from the fact that it feels like I'm swallowing razor blades right now. And three, because people kept asking me for a crystal systems video. Please extend your gratitude by commenting. I frankly don't care what you write in the comment section. Troll the life out of me for all I care. Tell me what you had for lunch. I care very little. But it tickles the algorithm and the attention tickles the dopamine center of my brain. So thank you very much for watching. And please, politely or impolitely, again, I couldn't care less type a request for the next video that I could make into the comment section, wherever that is. Bye.